You probably know that there are tons of benefits to stretching, but what I think most people miss is the role the brain plays in stretching, as well as all of the benefits that come with stretching. So let's discuss. Understanding this entirely changed my approach to stretching, so I wanna share it with you so it can make your practice more efficient too. Effective stretching is way more than just elongating muscles. And becoming a flexible person is so much more than grimacing your way through a stretch. Just consider that the range of motion of a person who's under anesthesia will increase instantly and massively. So there's way more to it than just the muscles or the fascia or anything else going on beyond your nervous system. It's about your brain and more importantly, how safe or threatening it determines a range of motion to be. That's right, if your brain doesn't want you to move further into a stretch, then it will stop you. So, communicating to our brain and nervous system that a stretch is safe is crucial for increasing flexibility and enhancing mobility. By understanding the neurology behind stretching, we can tap into the brain-body connection, allowing for deeper, more effective stretches without risking injury. The nervous system plays a crucial role in controlling the length of your muscles and the tension. So no, it does more than play a crucial role actually. It's in charge. Before I go any further, up till now, I admit I've been kind of using the brain and the nervous system interchangeably. So let's just break that down so that we're all on the same page. Your nervous system consists of the central nervous system or CNS, which includes your brain and spinal cord. And then there's the peripheral nervous system or PNS. And this includes just all of the nerves that connect the central nervous system to the rest of the body. So these are called your peripheral nerves. And these together make up the nervous system. But the nerves are, they're just the messengers, okay? It's the brain and sometimes the spinal cord that is constantly doing the important job of receiving input from your body and the outside world, interpreting that information and deciding if it's important or not, and if it puts you in danger or if it's safe. And then it produces an output that it deems necessary depending on that interpretation. So when it comes to stretching, the input is information from the peripheral nervous system, such as where your leg is and how much certain muscles are being tugged tight, what's going on in the joints like your hip and knee, etc. Then the central nervous system is interpreting that information it's received about these muscles and other tissues, and it's going to decide if it's safe or threatening to let your leg go deeper into that stretch. So then the output may be either a sensation of stop that makes you feel like you ain't going any deeper into that stretch, or if your brain has deemed it safe to do so, then the tissues are allowed to lengthen and they receive information from the brain through the nerves to do just that and you experience a deeper stretch that hopefully feels good. Two key components involved in the neurology of stretching are muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs, or GTOs. And both of these are sensory receptors, so that means they're part of that input. So let's go over the muscle spindles. They're located inside your muscle fibers and they monitor changes in muscle length and the rate of change. So they're basically saying, hey, central nervous system, the hamstrings are elongating. When a muscle is stretched, the muscle spindles send signals to the spinal cord, which in turn initiates a reflex contraction of the muscle to prevent you from stretching too far and possibly getting injured. And this is a reflex known as the stretch reflex. Cool, huh? So the second components are Golgi tendon organs. I'm gonna just say GTO from now on. 
They're located at the junction between your muscles and tendons, and their job is to detect changes in muscle tension. So when tension increases to a certain threshold, GTOs send an inhibitory signal to the spinal cord, causing the muscles to relax. And this mechanism is known as autogenic inhibition. It helps increase muscle length and decrease tension. But what we clever humans have done is use our prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that kind of makes us human and allows us to plan and cogitate, to override these reflexes. And we've come up with techniques for increasing mobility and flexibility by doing just that. So let's look at three of these stretching techniques and look at them from a brain-based perspective. So first is static stretching. This technique is just holding a stretch for a prolonged amount of time, starting at maybe 30 seconds. You're just gonna hold it, not move as much as possible. This technique can gradually decrease neural activity in the muscle spindles, and this allows for greater increase in muscle length. Let's go back and remember how I said that we can kind of boil neurology down to that simple model of input, interpretation, and output. So if you're doing a static stretch and the muscle spindles and other sensory receptors in your body are doing their thing and sending information up to your spinal cord and brain about what's going on, then that interpretation, if it ends up being not good, danger, I don't like my human in this stretch, then it's gonna produce outputs of threat like pain or tightening your muscles or increasing your heart rate and things that just make you wanna get out of that stretch ASAP. So we can help with that by, first of all, maybe just listening to that. Maybe it is time to get out of that stretch, but also breathe. Make sure you're breathing. Take it gentle. Be patient with your body. Changes take time. I always like to think three out of 10 in terms of sensation. So there's no point sitting in a stretch for too long. There's a lot of stretching research out there, and as far as I know, Nobody's found any benefits for flexibility from staying in a static stretch for longer than a minute. Okay? Okay. So the second stretching technique we'll discuss is dynamic stretching. And this just means instead of holding a stretch in stillness, we kind of move into it and out of it. This technique helps warm up the muscles and improves range of motion without triggering a super strong stretch reflex. It's like, you know if you dip your toe into some cold water and then slowly ease yourself into that swimming pool, you don't get that like <gasps> gasp of utter shock of being suddenly immersed in the cold. So it's kind of like that for your brain. Like with static stretching though, we want to do it in a way that the central nervous system interprets it as safe. Please make sure you're breathing. And remember that rather than going full on and trying to get all your results in one day, be gentle. Consistency is what pays off. Over time, those incremental changes are going to get you the results. The third technique is my favorite, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, or PNF. And this involves both stretching and contracting the muscle group being targeted. PNF takes advantage of those Golgi tendon organs' response to increase muscle relaxation following contraction, allowing for deeper stretches. So once again, taking to our lizard lunge, if we wanted to use this PNF technique to gain more range of motion in the quads, we could push the foot into the hand as we continue to breathe and tell the brain, hey, this is totally safe, relax our jaw, shoulders so further send signals to our brain this is safe and then after a few seconds like that we could relax and gently pull the heel closer to our butt and doing a few rounds of that can result in some pretty cool changes to your range of motion as discussed we need to go beyond the muscles and even the spinal reflexes to understand the role that the brain plays in flexibility and mobility. Our mental and emotional states significantly influence our physical flexibility. So first off, tenacity. Even if you do the most effective stretching exercise in the history of the universe, if you only do it once, 
it's not gonna stick, right? Through neuroplasticity, our brain adapts to new movements. In neurology, there's a saying, neurons that fire together wire together, meaning basically the more you do it, the easier it gets. Or as we say in yoga, practice and all is coming, right? So basically it's through regular stretching, showing up consistently, that the brain learns that these new ranges of motion are a thing, but also that they're safe, they're important, they're useful, and continues to enhance our coordination and flexibility over time. But it's not just about the physical. There's that sense of safety that we must engender to be effective at anything, including stretching. If your brain is in danger mode, then it's going to switch on all the things that it thinks you need to stay alive right now, in this moment. And so yeah, slow, long breaths, super helpful for telling your brain, no, actually we're, we're all good, no danger here. But there are a few other things that can make your brain think you're in danger. And I'm talking about you talking to yourself like you're a piece of trash. No, we can't have that. Being really hard on yourself, thinking that the only way to be successful is push, push, push. Worrying, comparing yourself to others, all that stuff, no. Mm -mm. All of that is another thing telling your brain something's not right. And if your brain thinks you're in danger, it is not interested in giving you more range of motion. So it's not woo-woo, it's science. Be kind to yourself. And then there's mindfulness and body awareness. Pay attention. Don't start thinking about what you're gonna have for lunch, right? Tune in, stretch with intention. Again, it comes down to your brain and whether it's interpreting your actions as important and useful or not. And if you're not paying attention, then you're telling your brain this isn't very important. Pain perception is another critical aspect. Now, I do have a whole free workshop on the neurology of pain on my website, Move with Adele. But for now, let's just appreciate that there's a difference between pain and discomfort. Discomfort is typically defined as something you can still breathe through. It's not so distracting that you literally can't think of anything else. Okay, and it's always going to be subjective. It's different for everybody. But no matter what, try to greet whatever sensations you feel with curiosity rather than dread or fear, and you'll go a lot further. And something else to watch for is another reflex. It's called the startle reflex, and it looks something like this. It's characterized by a grimace on the face, short, shallow breaths, increased heart rate, tension in the muscles around the face and neck, especially in the shoulders. And this is a really easy way to spot that the nervous system is in danger mode. So if you're stretching and you catch yourself grimacing and you're all puffy, try to undo that by relaxing all those muscles, especially up here, and taking a few long, deep, Visualization techniques also play a part. And this goes back to that curiosity I mentioned. You could even close your eyes and imagine muscles lengthening, tension melting away as you stretch. This is another way that we can use our prefrontal cortex to send helpful signals to other more like reptilian parts of our brain and thus chill out and get the results that we're looking for. And finally, mobility is just one thing in a long list of health and wellness outcomes that are aided by generally looking after yourself. Prioritize your sleep, eat whole foods, spend time with people who support you, stay curious about everything, and keep your body moving. I hope this video has been helpful and the knowledge empowers you to work with your beautiful, sexy body. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And also, if you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about yoga and these techniques, check out these videos next, where I dive deep into more information and mobility strategy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.